Welcome to worship from beautiful Savior Lutheran in Waukesha, Wisconsin. I'm Peter Schmidt. I have the great privilege of serving as pastor here at Beautiful Savior. If you happen to watch our online service last week, you might recall that I was dressed rather casually, and that's the case today as well. The reason for that, I'm pre-recording this before Ellen and I go on a trip, our vacation. And indeed, I'm in vacation mode, relaxed mode, looking forward to getting away from everything, not even taking the phone along, so I'm not distracted. Have you ever had that where you just want to get away and no distractions? But let's turn that around a little bit. Have you ever had a situation where someone wanted to get away from you? I've had that happen where I've seen a person maybe I haven't seen for quite a while, and I'm kind of happy to see that person, but for one reason or another, the person avoids me, doesn't want to talk to me, and that can be rather hurtful, can't it? We're going to hear a story today about a woman, a Syrophoenician woman, who came to Jesus asking Jesus to do something for her. It may seem at first that Jesus just kind of wants to get away from her, but that's not the case at all. We're going to learn about this marvelous God who wants to be with us. And so right now, we pray that God the Holy Spirit would strengthen that bond between us and Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as we worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
it's time to get into our family story through our scripture readings. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 56. This is what the Lord says. Maintain justice and do what is right, for my salvation is close at hand, and my righteousness will soon be revealed. Foreigners who bind themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord, and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath without desecrating it, and who hold fast to my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and give them joy in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. The Sovereign Lord declares, He who gathers the exiles of Israel, I will gather still others to them besides those already gathered. And our second reading is from Matthew chapter 15, beginning at verse 21. Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. A Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. He replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. In response to that reading, we read Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine on us so that your ways may be known on earth, your salvation among all nations. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples with equity and guide the nations of the earth. May the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. The land yields its harvest, God, our God, blesses us. May God bless us still so that all the ends of the earth will fear him. Welcome to Puppet Time with Pastor, and I'm here again with our good friend Barnabas. How are you doing today, Barnabas? You're really kind of nervous. How come? I'm going to a new school. You're going to a new school? A new obedience school? I'm going to try to do it with black labs. A new obedience school, and everyone else there is a black lab? Oh, man. I'm going to flip out. 
you're going to stick out. You're going to try to dye my fur. You're going to think you're going to try to dye your fur so you blend in? Hey, I don't think that's a good idea. But, you know, it can be very scary, intimidating, going to a new school with all new people, especially if you seem different than everyone else. Mm, I'm worried. You're worried about it? Yeah, I understand that. Been there, done that. But, you know, when you think about it, in today's story about Jesus and that Syrophoenician woman, well, that woman was different than everyone else. Favorite story. It's your favorite story in the Bible. How come? About the dog getting food. About the dog getting food from the master's table. Hey, I can understand that. But, you know, this woman, she was different than everyone. At least the disciples kind of looked at her that way. Because she wasn't Jewish. She wasn't of the same culture that they were. And when she came to Jesus, who wanted to be by himself with the disciples, and she came and barged in, well, I don't know if they were necessarily happy about that. Maybe they thought Jesus would do something. But, you know, to them, she didn't belong. That's what I'm worried about. That's what you're worried about with this new school, that you're not going to belong? Well, do you remember what Jesus did in the story? The woman kept coming to Jesus and wouldn't give up. And when Jesus said, you know, is it right to give the children's food to the dogs? Let the children first eat as much as they want. Then she had that great reply. Yep, even the dogs get crumbs from the table. And you know what she was saying? She was saying that, hey, Whatever you give me, Jesus, it's going to be good. That's why I've come to you. I believe that you're going to take care of me. And Jesus did, didn't he? You know what? Jesus will take care of you in, in your new school situation. And there are some people, as we start school at Beautiful Savior this week, that will be at a new school, and they'll be kind of nervous about it. And some people, well, will be going away to college and something completely different. Hey, all of us get nervous and worried about things. Really? Yep. The only person who doesn't get nervous and worried about things is Jesus. And he's the one who's going to be there with us. Jesus, the one who even died on a cross for us and didn't run away from that. He knew that his heavenly father would take care of him, get him through that. And in Easter Sunday, he wasn't disappointed. He's alive and well. So the same Jesus who could rise in Easter, he knows how to take care of you. He knows how to take care of me. And more than anything else, he looks at each of us and doesn't look at our outward appearance and doesn't say, hey, everyone else is a black lab. You better be a black lab. No, he doesn't say that. He looks inside of us. And the Holy Spirit has worked in us this marvelous gift of faith, which holds on to him, which trusts him, just like that woman did. And you know what? That same Jesus who took care of her, he'll take care of you too. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that as we get into the message. But before we do that, yep, let's sing the hymn. is the world's light Christ and none other born in a darkness he became our brother if we have seen him we have seen the father glory to God on high God the Father, glory to God. 
God on high. Christ is the word to life. Christ and the Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you take a look at this picture, you see identical twins. One looks very neat, the other like a slob. And this was a part of an experiment that was done by a few colleges to see if there was a prejudice against how people looked as far as if they came across as just being dirty, as being unclean. So let me read you just a little bit about that study. The biases individuals harbor against people they see as physically dirty emerge in children as young as five years old and persist into adulthood according to a new study by researchers from Boston College and Franklin and Marshall College. In three experiments involving approximately 260 respondents, the researchers found children's and adults' biases were stronger when evaluating similarly aged peers and cross-cultural boundaries when tested in the U.S. and India, according to the report published in an advanced online edition of the Journal of Experimental Child Psychology. You know, this idea of being clean and unclean, we see it all over the Hebrew scriptures, don't we? Because there we see how God set his people Israel apart to be a people dedicated to him, separate from all the different nations, and as a part of being set apart, he had given them specific dietary laws. And there were some food, some animals that were considered clean. These are okay for you. And others considered unclean, things to avoid. But then other things would happen. If there were certain diseases that someone had, well, now you were unclean and you had to stay away from the community. And some started looking at the nations around them, saying they're different than us. They're unclean. We're clean. You know, that was going on in Jesus' day, too, where there was a lot of discussion about what is clean and what is unclean. So we read this 
in Mark chapter 7. One day, some Pharisees and teachers of religious law arrived from Jerusalem to see Jesus. They noticed that some of his disciples failed to follow the Jewish ritual of hand-washing before eating. The Jews, especially the Pharisees, do not eat until they poured water over their cupped hands, as required by their ancient traditions. Similarly, they don't eat anything from the market until they immerse their hands in water. This is but one of many traditions they have clung to, such as their ceremonial washing of cups, pitchers, and kettles. Now we go on in chapter 7. Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. All of you listen, he said, and try to understand. It's not what goes into your body that defiles you. You are defiled by what comes from your heart. Then Jesus went into a house to get away from the crowd, and his disciples asked him what he meant by the parable he had just used. Don't you understand either, he asked. Can't you see that the food you put into your body cannot defile you? Food doesn't go into your heart, but only passes through the stomach and then goes into the sewer. By saying this, he declared that every kind of food is acceptable in God's eyes. Well, let's stop there for a moment because that's a big deal. Jesus is turning everything upside down as far as all the traditions and the laws, as far as the dietary restrictions, what's considered clean and unclean. And so people had to stop and what is he doing? What gives him the right? What gives him the authority to change everything? But Jesus goes on and says this, it is what comes from inside that defiles you. For from within, out of a person's heart, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. So what is Jesus talking about? You know, back in 1 Samuel chapter 16, the prophet Samuel went to the house of Jesse because the Lord said, there you will anoint who will be the second king of Israel to take King Saul's place. And so Jesse's sons are there and, and Samuel looks at them and says, oh man, this one is so strong and, and mighty. Undoubtedly, he's the one uh, but the Lord had to remind Samuel, look, human beings look at outward appearance. But the Lord doesn't judge that way. The Lord doesn't judge by human appearance. But the Lord looks at what's in the heart. You know, wouldn't it be nice if we don't judge by outward appearances? But we do. And the fact of the matter is, even if we might not look at someone and say, hey, um, I really don't care what skin color you are or whatever it would be. The fact is, there are some groups that we feel more comfortable with, and then there are other th people that, like, I don't want anything to do with you, quite honestly. And so this whole matter of treating people as being clean and unclean, well, that's what we get to now. Because what Jesus has just said about what's clean and unclean in God's sight and looking at the heart is going to be applied when he makes his way to the area of Tyre and Sidon. So we pick things up. What we heard in our scripture reading today from Matthew chapter 15, but you see this is also recorded in Mark chapter 7, and so we are going to put those two accounts together to get a full picture of Jesus and this woman coming to him, pleading on behalf of her daughter. So this is what we read. When Jesus left there, he withdrew to the area of Tyre and Sidon, so a non-Jewish area. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it, but he could not escape notice. 
Have you ever had that happen where you just want to be by yourself or you just want it quiet, but then all of a sudden something happens and man, your peace and quiet is ruined and you're not by yourself anymore? Remember a few weeks ago, if you were watching or were with us in person, we had the account of Jesus feeding well over 5,000 people. Remember how Jesus said to his disciples, we need to get away. And they were in this boat on the Sea of Galilee, but people saw them get in the boat and they ran ahead to where they thought they would land. And sure enough, they landed and there were thousands of people there. So much for being by oneself, but Jesus did what Jesus does, has compassion on those who desperately need him, like sheep without a shepherd. And so he takes care of their needs healing people, and then feeding well over 5,000 people. Well, here Jesus tries to be alone again with his disciples, but things happen. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came, fell at his feet, and kept crying out, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is cruelly tormented by a demon. All right, let's just stop there for a moment. The fact that she is calling Jesus Lord, Son of David, is a way of saying she is looking at him as being the Messiah. This one who was talked about, who had come from God to do what God had promised to do, to save people. Well, it goes on. Now, the woman was Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, And she kept asking him to drive the demon out of her daughter, but the result, there's silence. Jesus doesn't say a word. You know, in our day and age, one thing we're really bad with is silence. We are not good with having to wait for things. And we don't like to just have nothing going on. And so we fill it up with a variety of things. And when silence comes, it seems kind of awkward. And it's hard. You know, there are times where it seems like God is silent too. We're calling out. We want God to act. And nothing's happening. It's almost like he doesn't care. And maybe that's how this woman may have felt. But, well, the silence was broken. So his disciples approached Jesus and urged him, send her away because she cries out after us. Now, some have suggested that the disciples were expecting Jesus to do something for her. It's almost like they're saying, will you just do something, heal what needs to be healed, send her on her way so we can be by ourselves. But I'm not quite sure if that's it. Because, you know, it's one thing when you're pleading the case of someone near and dear to you. But they don't know who this woman is. And this woman is different than they are not even Jewish. And to them, she might have been in imposition at best, a pain at worst. Send her away. Now Jesus makes this comment, perhaps in the hearing of the woman, but the disciples hear it. Jesus says, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeah, see, there it is. Yeah, you're not Jewish, go away. But the woman persists. So the woman goes on, comes before Jesus, kneels at his feet and says, Lord, help me. She doesn't get all upset about things. She doesn't feel, oh, I've been canceled and that's it. Now she holds on to Jesus now coming before him, maybe even breaking through a wall of disciples, if you will. She needs to be with Jesus. How do you know you're in love with someone? You need to be with that person. And what we're seeing is this love of this woman for Jesus, this trust, this faith in Jesus, but quite frankly for Jesus too, because Jesus doesn't run away from the woman. Jesus gets into a conversation with her. But it's a very interesting conversation. First, let the children eat all they want. For it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. 
So Mark's account is just slightly different than what Matthew says and kind of takes the edge out of it. Because what Jesus is saying is, look, let me have my time with my disciples and then we'll take care of you. But the woman's response is outstanding. Yes, it is, Lord, she said. Even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Now, I have a picture there of my dog, Jingles, who uh, we had to put down a few weeks ago. And Jingles loved food. Jingles would always be by the table where there was food. And she always had this expected look. In fact, she kept barking. It was very annoying, I have to say. It, it was something we could never cure her of. And maybe that's how the disciples felt. Yeah, this woman's like this dog that keeps barking. It's driving me nuts. Uh, but, you know, I have to admit, my dog's barking at the table never bothered me too much. In fact, what I would often do, and it's probably not the right thing to do, but I wouldn't just wait for things to fall off the table. I'd, I'd hand stuff over to her. And again, maybe not the right thing to do as far as you know, perfect training. But why did I do it? Because I love my dog, to be honest about it. And I wanted my dog to be happy. See what this woman is saying? This woman is saying, Lord, look, um, pets are by the table, welcomed into the family, and they get scraps from the table. I'm good with that. I'm coming to you, yeah, maybe it's not the same level as your disciples, but I'm coming to you, and I'll be like a house pet, whatever it is, but you know, I'm coming to this table because I need something from you. And whatever comes from your hand is going to be for my good. That is amazing faith. And so Jesus answers, woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Faith, we read in Hebrews 11, is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. What didn't she see? She didn't see Jesus dropping everything and coming to her. Nor did she hear an immediate response. What she did see in here were those who had followed Jesus trying to drive her away, but she loved Jesus and she needed to be with Jesus. She had complete confidence that Jesus would not disappoint her. She trusted. You know, when we think about faith, there's one person in the Old Testament that comes to mind immediately. It's Father Abraham. So Father Abraham was told by the Lord to leave his homeland and go to a place where the Lord would show him. And then the Lord also made this promise to him that he would be the father of a great nation. Now this was an amazing promise because he and his wife Sarah didn't have any children and they continued to go long in years, and they still didn't have any children. But there was this promise. The promise we hear in Genesis, the Lord saying to Abraham, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you. This Syrophoenician woman, non-Jewish, but called Jesus Lord, son of David, looked at him as the Messiah. She was holding on to this promise. I'm a part of all nations, and I will be blessed through you. And what's the blessing? To be in this marvelous relationship of love with God, where God doesn't rank people and have favorites, but God is this amazing God who says, come to me. Oh, what do we hear? My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations in Isaiah 56. And then in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. 
that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Martin Luther once said, you know, I'm glad I never saw my name Martin Luther in the Bible because I would never be convinced that it was actually me. I'd never be sure of that. But I'm in all nations. And so are you, and so am I. What a marvelous Lord who comes to us, reminding us that when he came to this earth, he didn't come for a select few. When he died on the cross to cover the guilt of sin, it wasn't for a select few. It's for all of us. And when he rose victorious, says, so whoever believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. What an amazing God. And what an amazing picture we have in Revelation chapter 7. John says, after this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands, and they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. God so loved the world. So what are we learning today? There are two ways we can see ourselves here. We could see ourselves like the disciples. Yeah, we follow Jesus, but when it comes down to it, we like some people better than others. And we're not necessarily going out of our way to always bring people to him. Now, obviously, that's not living a life of love. Isn't it so much better to begin learning from that woman and learning about faith and coming to Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit, relying on him with complete confidence, saying, I'm not worthy of anything from you, but I'll be like a pet dog because whatever is going to come from your hand is going to be good. And I trust that you're going to take care of me. And as for clean and unclean, I'm unclean. I'm a poor, miserable sinner. But Lord, clean me up. And look at me not as I deserve to be looked at because of sin. But look at me at what you've made me. Beginning in the waters of holy baptism through the working of your spirit. And then what happens is we start looking at the world around us differently. And you know, there might be some people we see that look really dirty, so to speak, messed up in a lot of ways. And yes, there are some things that we just need to avoid because if we get involved with them, they will lead us away from Jesus. But rather than being prejudicial and looking at some people and saying you're not worth it and writing them off, we look at them and say, you know, but Jesus loves you. Jesus died for that person. And so what do we do? We bring them to the Lord in prayer. Lord, this person needs you. Holy Spirit, work in this person's life, the desire to come to know Jesus as he is, and work in that person this wondrous gift of faith, that you've worked in me, which holds on to the love of God, this love which will never give up on me, this love which will take me through all the different things in this life and get me right where the Lord wants me to be, a part of that wondrous multitude that is made up of people from every tribe, language, and nation, all singing the same praises to the same God, Rejoicing in a God who doesn't look at us and say, hey, you're clean, you're unclean. But a God who looks at us and says, I love you. You're my own. Not just for a moment. Not just when it's politically expedient. Now Jesus says, in love, you're mine for all eternity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Would you please join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so very, very much for making it a priority for joining us for worship this weekend. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord always look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen.